Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joseph Ward, your historical homeboy, right here on the On the Shoulders of James YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in, for checking me out, and being a part of this journey. We're here to give you the sung and unsung heroes of the African diaspora that you probably wouldn't learn about. So thank you for rocking with us. And I just want to let you know that we're now on Patreon. So you can become a patron and help us empower and educate as many communities as possible throughout the African diaspora. www.patreon.com backslash OTSOG. Now go ahead and get to this video so we can drop this knowledge on you. Peace out. Always, always. The Deacons for Defense and Justice In 1964, the Deacons for Defense and Justice were formed by black men in Jonesboro, Louisiana to protect the black citizens and civil rights activists from the Ku Klux Klan. Armed self-defense was inconsistent with the nonviolent philosophy adopted during the civil rights movement. Two military veterans named Ernest Chili Willie Thomas and Frederick Douglass Kirkpatrick were the original founders of the Deacons for Defense. The organization grew in popularity because it appealed to sections of the civil rights movement who no longer believed that nonviolence was a sound strategy. Thomas and Douglas created an organization that would discourage Klan attacks as well as help prevent activists and black community members from police and fire hose attacks. The Deacons made headlines when their defense activities forced then Louisiana Governor John McKeithen and Jonesboro city leaders to compromise with civil rights activists. As the deacons grew in numbers and popularity, they began to open chapters in different cities. In 1965, Thomas and Kirkpatrick established a second chapter of the Deacons for Defense and Justice in Bogalusa, Louisiana. After working with the black leaders in Bogalusa, Thomas and Kirkpatrick left the chapter under the leadership of Robert Bob Hicks, Charles Sims, and A.Z. Young. The Klan was attacking the blacks in Bogalusa, so the people organized to defend themselves. The first black deputy sheriff of Washington Parish, Louisiana was assassinated by racist whites. The murder increased the tension between the Klan and the Deacons. The tension grew so tough that federally regulated reconstruction era laws were instituted to protect the civil rights activists. In 1966, civil rights activist James Meredith was embarking on a march from Memphis, Tennessee to Jackson, Mississippi called the March Against Fear. Meredith was shot and severely wounded by a white supremacist. Stokely Carmichael and many other activists completed the march for Meredith, but the idea of self-defense was more prominent. Carmichael was instrumental in convincing Dr. Martin Luther King and other leaders that the deacons can be integrated into the movement, provide protection, and maintain the unity of the movement. By 1965, the deacons were being investigated by J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI. COINTELPRO tactics were unleashed upon the deacons and the FBI was able to obtain substantial information about the organization. Disloyal black FBI informants were feeding the FBI information about the activities the deacons engaged in. These tactics helped members of the deacons become continuously harassed, arrested, and questioned by the FBI. As the years passed, other organizations emerged and began to overshadow the deacons as far as public attention. The presence of the Black Panthers took away much of the FBI attention that was usually reserved for the Deacon. By 1968, the Deacons disbanded, but in the short time, they made a huge impact. The Deacons helped change the ideas and strategies of the civil rights organizations and helped lay the foundation for organizations such as the Black Panther Party to exist. They understood that nonviolence was a tactic that can be used, but nonviolence was not always the best course of action. They often challenged the KKK and Louisiana police who were looking to harm black people. In all, the deacons were able to organize 21 chapters and 46 affiliate chapters across the country. Historian Lance Hill wrote the following about the deacons. The hard truth is that these organizations produced few victories in their local projects in the Deep South. If success is measured by the ability to force changes in local government policy and create self-governing and sustainable local organizations that could survive when the national organizations departed, the Deacons' campaign frequently resulted in substantial and unprecedented victories at the local level, producing real power in self-sustaining organizations. The Deacons were not fully accepted when they were created, but over time it was understood that they were not organized to incite violence, but only to protect their people from white supremacists. 
to the entire deacons for defense and justice. We proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com or www.ontheshoulders.org.